The, the, the other thing, to raves, I mean, the, this would be a collection of raves and conjectures, um, but I, I think the influence of print for academics or universities, the way they regard content, is still there, as, as if it's something to be protected and kept away somewhere. Um, I just noticed that quite a lot of quite a lot of um, lectures and talks are turning up online, but and they use uh, YouTube to host it, but very often it's unlisted, or else the the comments are turned off, and it's it's something similar to print journalists. I think um, there's something about it that I think is un unfortunate because um, it it makes it very hard to find it and I think if they're, if they're just trying to reach a wider audience um, involve more people in, in the conversation around their research or their teaching or whatever it is they're trying to do uh, I don't see what the problem would be in making it possible for the search engines to find it or for somebody else to put a link to it um, or add a comment uh, it, it just seems a bit a bit strange to me um, there's I, I don't think I will give examples of this uh, oh I'll give one example because it relates to the um, the ruins of the fortress university the um, the talk by Durham University that was from Peter Horrocks uh, that it, the headline of the Fortress University was, was in the press release from the Open University but they called it distance learning or something they, 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 they didn't they didn't really make it search engine optimised even when it was findable um, but uh, how, to, how to explain this it, it was at the time of the of the uh, funding for Future Learn, so about ten, twelve years ago now, I think at least ten, when the MOOC was uh, very controversial, um, partly because it was a way of burning money, and uh, the Open University was about the only uh, UK university prepared to do that, and they weren't the best place to do it. Um, and a lot of the staff thought, well, why? What is, what is the point of this? Which was all quite reasonable. Um, but it was also the case, Peter Horrocks was making quite a, quite a strong critique of the existing model of what a campus-based um, three-year degree for life um, university ought to be. Um, and so that's one I, that I think should just be, be easy to locate. And also, it ought to be Creative Commons, and well, that, but that would just make my life more easier if it was Creative Commons or anybody's life easier who wanted to find bits and pieces for radio. Um, so that's the, yeah, that's the third thing about it. These are three choices that can be made when uploading to YouTube. Number one, make it listed so somebody can find it, and the search engines can find it. There is now quite a lot of interest in artificial intelligence, machine learning, so on and so forth, from academics. But the search engines have been doing this for a while. And people who browse YouTube and other, other sites, uh, gra gradually people sort of understand what, how, how these things work. This is, I think what's happening recently is just taking it faster. Uh, Make the comments possible because you 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 don't know what that's going to lead to. You'll get links and feedback and connections. All kinds of things will come out of comments. And um, oh no, so I'm getting I'm getting a muddled up. What was the what was the third one? The Creative Commons. Yes, uh, if it's Creative Commons, then it can be remixed, which may sound an awful idea. But if it's a an hour and a half with half an hour of questions. Um, for radio even, um, 10 minutes of something is about, you know, if you can get it less than that, and then pl I think we'll play some music now. Uh, but I think I've, I've said enough about this. Uh, 
but it's good there's lots of lots of lots of stuff is a, is available on on youtube it's just not as clearly available as, as it might be